How do we calculate an irrational number? You might say we just punch it into the calculator, but how does the calculator calculate it? Let's start with the square root of 2, one of the classics. It can be proven that it's irrational by using contradiction, which means that it cannot be written in the form of p over q, where p and q are both integers and relatively prime to each other. I don't have enough time to talk about it, but you can find the proof online. However, here is the problem many people have wondered. How can we calculate the decimal value of square root of 2? Where would we even start, assuming we did not want to use trial and error? One way was invented before the first century. It's called Heron's method. We can start with a plus epsilon is equal to square root of 2, where a is a rational number close to square root of 2. Or in another word, a squared is close to 2. And epsilon is the small difference between a and the square root of 2. If we square both sides, then a plus epsilon all squared is equal to 2. And then a squared plus 2a epsilon plus epsilon squared is equal to 2. Now remember, comparing to the other terms in the equation, epsilon is very small. So epsilon squared is even smaller. Therefore, epsilon squared is approximately 0. Thus, a squared plus 2a epsilon is approximately 2. If we isolate epsilon, we get epsilon is approximately 2 minus a squared altogether divided by 2a. So square root of 2 is equal to a plus epsilon, which is approximately a plus 2 minus a squared divided by 2a, which simplifies to a squared plus 2 altogether divided by 2a. If we try 1 in it, we get 3 over 2. And then if we put 3 over 2 in it, we will get 17 over 12. And then if we repeat it again, we get 577 over 408, which is equal to 1.41421568 something something something. This number is accurate for 5 decimal places. As you can see, we get a better result each successive time. After repeating many times, the fraction will be very accurate that one cannot tell the difference, at least not on the calculator's 9-digit display. Now, can we try to generalize such useful technique into something that applies to all square root of an integer? It's not hard if we think about this carefully. We can make a plus epsilon all squared is equal to c, where c is a constant and an integer. Now we can do what we did before and we will find that the square root of c is equal to a plus epsilon which is going to be equal to a squared plus c altogether divided by 2a. Right now, you must be curious why it works. To explain that, we must think about it from another perspective. If a plus epsilon is equal to the square root of c, then the absolute value of the square root of c minus a is equal to epsilon. This implies that this inequality right here. If we square both sides of the inequality, we get this inequality instead. If we simplify this, we get this thing right here. Now I'm going to do a trick. If we divide the whole thing by a, then this inequality will appear. Now if I simplify the middle, then you can see this thing right here. Now remember, this thing over here is equal to a squared plus c all over 2a. Therefore, our secondary approximation minus the square root of c is going to be less or equal to epsilon squared divided by a and the bigger were equal to zero. As I said before, epsilon squared is way smaller than epsilon. And since a is way bigger than epsilon, epsilon squared divided by a has to be less than epsilon. Therefore, every time you repeat the process, you get closer and closer to the real value of the square root. Although this method was discovered well before calculus, the same result is achieved by Newton's method, based on calculus. But if we could get the same answer by using Heron's method, is there a benefit to Newton's method? Yes, the significant difference is that Newton's method can approximate values for other irrational numbers, like e and pi. But that's a discussion for another day. Special thanks to Breakthrough Challenge and KanAcademy.org, which motivated me to make this video. And special thanks to my teachers, Mr. Pan and Mr. Lin.